Hello friends, welcome back to Geology Concepts. This week we will start structural geology and uh, it will be, I will start this with primary structures. It, it will be in three parts. So this is the part one of uh, primary structures in structural geology. Okay, so let's get into it. See, there are two types of geological structures. Okay, one is the primary structures. Now, primary structures include uh, which are formed during or shortly after the deposition of rock. Okay, now these include structures that are found in the sedimentary rocks. They are found in the igneous rocks. Okay, then second is the secondary structures. Now, these are structures forms in formed in response to the forces that are generated by plate interactions if there is some plate interactions let's say there is conduct sub subduction zone you know uh, the oceanic uh, ocean continental subduction zone or ocean ocean subduction zone so in in that uh, case there are structures like folds and faults which are formed okay those those come under secondary structures so in this series in this first three videos we will look at the primary structures okay so moving on now primary structures now there are some markers in primary structures so these markers help us in determining the deformation type of deformation so if see if if let's say this was the rock to start with okay there are some forces which are acting on it and this led to the deformation of the deformation of the rock now if there are if there is a marker like you see in this figure then we can see the type of deformation that has taken place and if there is no marker we cannot really tell the deformation or uh, whether that has happened or not so markers are very important to understand what kind of deformation or whether there has been any deformation or not okay so we first we need uh, uh, we study primary structures to interpret the geometry of the secondary structures all right now primary structures there are indicators of a stratigraphic top i mean uh, let's say if there was this uh, uh, let's say uh, deposition of beds from top to bottom okay so youngest fossil will be at the top and now due to some deformation the the this bed has been uh, bent uh, bent like this and the top part is now eroded so we see something like this so these structures tell us that which is the younging direction which is the top direction here okay so these kind of indicators these indicators are primary structures okay then we have tectonic environment so we can also understand the actual sedimentary history or overall tectonic history by analyzing the types of sediments there are different types of sediments different type of structures if we see deep water sediment if we see shallow water sediment or if there is progressive deepening in a shallow basin so different types of structures are formed okay we can see ripples here you can see lacustrine deposits in deep waters in like in see lake deposits okay so all this type of deposition have some unique feature associated with the environment in which it is deposited okay so primary structure helps us in understanding that so let's get into the primary structures of sedimentary rocks okay so first here is there are strata and there are bedding planes okay so is what is strata the unif the law of uniformitarianism says that the bedding plane is always horizontal to start with the deposition is always horizontal as you can see in this figure here the deposition is horizontal and there are some bedding planes the planes along which the, there is deposition is taking place you can see in this figure there are planes these planes which are you know uh, this is the cross section of a bedding plane here you can see the planes which are perpendicular to this cross section going inside the uh, these uh, this wall kind of a wall so these are bedding planes okay so these are the structures we see in sedimentary rocks okay sediments are deposited in a horizontal fashion okay so form this kind of bed then moving on we have the bedding planes now if you go into bedding planes these are the primary layering in sedimentary rocks okay you see there are there are layerings and uh, these rocks are formed due to deposition now generally these are defined by 
parallel lamination as you have seen in the last figure okay but there are a smallest subdivision of uh, sedimentary unit okay there are a smallest subdivision there are defined top and bottom if we if we see closely and these are distinguished from adjacent bed by let's say color there are different colors then there are different composition different size there is texture orientation how nicely the grain is packed so this is how we differentiate it from other areas okay uh, in this comes the term differential weathering differential weathering is that uh, within a given surface the some parts of the rock let's say in this figure this part and has been eroded whereas this part which is hard is not eroded so this is differential weathering soft part of the rocks get eroded and the hard part stays so this is this is how we can distinguish between two types of uh, deposition okay there is differential weathering you can see here okay next we have bedding parallel bedding parallel parting now what is this this is a tendency of sedimentary layers you can see here in this figure this zone i'm sorry you can see here this this portion yeah here you see in this portion there is parting tendency tendency of sedimentary rock of layers to split or fracture along planes which is parallel to the bedding now see the parting is parallel to the bedding as you can see in this figure okay now this is also called unroofing of beds why because there is if there is decrease in the load so let's say if there was a bed say so if uh, there was there was a bed and there was beds and the overlying pressure got removed let's say because of many reasons it can be also due to erosion and many things there is a decrease in pressure that this leads to fracture parallel to bedding planes because there are weaker bonds between the beds of different composition so these bonds tend to get more weak now rocks in this close spacing to spacing are fissile so they tend to part away from each other so this is called bedding parting bedding parallel parting okay there are some exceptions to uh, <laughs> uh, primary structures like in alluvial fan system you will not find any such structures okay this is a very poorly graded sediment and not much of a structure are seen in this in this kind of depositions nevertheless there are some internal structures of sedimentary rocks okay first we'll go into cross bedding now cross bedding what is cross bedding it is internal layer as you can see in this figure here let me zoom it for you first yeah see in this figure you see these uh, parallel and uh, you know these layers within one bed let's say this is one bed within one bed you see these kind of layers okay these layers are called cross beddings okay and they are oblique they, they are at an angle or oblique to an overall bounding surface of the master bed so this is the master bed this and these lines in this you can see are oblique to it at an angle to it okay so this is called cross beddings okay and uh, these cross beddings are indicative of the direction of flow so if there is this uh, bed layer and cross bedding is like this okay so it is truncating at the top but it is tangential at the bottom okay so this will give you the flow direction so this will be the a flow direction and the truncating surface will be the top okay so this will be the top and this will be the bottom so that's how we uh, determine the top and the and the flow direction okay so uh, sediment movement from upstream or windward direction towards the downstream or the leeward direction okay as you see in a dune you know you know you see you see dune which is like this um, let's say it is like this uh, these are this is this is the dune so this is the leave uh, it is the stoss side this is the uh, wind wind or the leeward side okay this is the leeward side so you can see cross beddings in this along this directions like this so these cross beddings helps in understanding the flow direction and also if it is truncating at the top this is the yanging direction okay next we have types of cross beddings 
okay so there are this tabular cross beddings tabular cross bedding then we have lenticular cross beddings this one and then we have wedge shaped cross beddings okay so these types of cross bedding we can see the uh, mainly which are deposited which are formed by water laid sediments are tabular and lenticular in shape lenticular is very common in uh, deposits of river made by braided river system okay then there is tabular deposit you can see in meandering river system which is along the point bars you can see tabular okay and in the wind deposition there are mostly wedge shaped depositions okay one important thing is to note that if the layer if the cross bearing layer is not uh, tangential to any and uh, not tangential at any side the deposition is almost uh, uh, planar and truncating on the both the side we cannot tell which one is the young direction we can only say that this is the flow direction but we cannot tell the young direction the young direction is always uh, determined the cross bedding by the thing if it is tangential at one end and it is truncating or truncating at the top end all right next we have see yeah this is what i was talking about you see you see here it is planar cross beddings so in this planar cross beddings you can obviously tell that this will be the flow direction but you cannot say what would have been the younging direction of this but in this we can say that this is the flow direction and this is the younging direction because the top is truncating and bottom part is almost tangential or asymptotic to the planar surface planar bed surface okay so this is uh, all about the uh, cross beddings and uh, this so if you see these two types of bed you can also understand that uh, what kind of process that has been gone through let's say let's say this type of rock would have been something like this and uh, this would have been like this so this has been overturned cross beddings so if we see other cross bedding in the nearby area we can get an idea of what has been the dynamics of this region okay and how the uh, tectonics have uh, you know worked in this zone so uh, this is for this video we'll continue with the st uh, structures or primary structures in the sedimentary rocks in the next video so till then keep uh, revising and uh, thank you very much subscribe to know your planet better